So urinary issues, believe it or not, between men and women are actually very, very similar. The main difference between the two sexes is the men, we have to think about the prostate in the relationship to the urinary issues it can cause. In women, we don't have that same consideration. But very, very common urinary issues for both sexes is gonna be kind of division between urgency, frequency, or overactive bladder type urinary symptoms, and then stress incontinence type symptoms. So that's when we cough, laugh, sneeze, and we have a little bit of urine that escapes. Starting treatments for overactive bladder are gonna be our conservative options. So we're gonna talk a lot about, you know, what are some of the dietary factors, coffee, caffeines, overhydration sometimes, uh, spicy food, citrus fruit, that might contribute to an irritated or overactive bladder. We're gonna look at different things also in terms of medications that they may be on that drive urinary symptoms. And if all of those things have kind of been addressed, then we're gonna move on to medications. And so there's multiple different medications that are out there and selecting the right one for the right patient is very important to try and avoid, avoid the side effects and then also provide them with the best efficacy. But medications don't work all the time, so we do need to have some other options. So for other options in terms of the urgency frequency, and sometimes that progresses into what we call urge incontinence, where the urgency frequency is so bad that you just can't make it to the toilet in time anymore. So for that, we have more advanced treatments, and those can range from uh, medicines that we can inject directly into the bladder, acupuncture treatments down to the lower leg and also uh, sacral neural modulation, which I like to kind of explain as acupuncture for the bladder nerve, um, but it's a permanent form and it can last up to 20 years. So treatment options for stress incontinence, because it's a mechanical problem, it's that laugh, cough, sneeze that's causing urine to, to leak out from the bladder. So because it's a mechanical problem, oftentimes we have mechanical solutions. So in this situation, medications really don't do much to help stress incontinence. And so we have to kind of build up the barrier that the urethra or the urine tube used to have. And we can do this with either surgical technique. There are things like slings for both men and women. For men, we have a device called an artificial urinary sphincter. And then for both sexes, we can inject a medication into the urethra that kind of bulks it. It's called a bulking agent, and that makes that sphincter a little bit tighter so they're not leaking. And all these different options really vary with the type of treatment it is. So medications, um, we can see medication failures in up to 60% of patients. So medicines oftentimes may need to be changed or adjusted or move on to a different therapy if it, they're not working right. Some of the more definitive therapies, if it's for the urge incontinence, like the Botox or the sacral neuromodulation, those can see success rates above 80% and they're they're very well tolerated. For the stress leakage, those are more definitive therapies, and so those can have success rates above 85% in many cases.